first speaker for the affirmative team, please come up to present the case in support of the proposition. Where I started, everyone. <laughs> a place where torture exists. A place where there is no due process. A place that exists in a legal black hole. A place that practices values that terrorists hold dear. A place in which out of 173 inmates, 90 are innocent according to a US cable leak by WikiLeaks. We believe this place should be shut down. And we base our stance on three levels. Number one, Gutano Obey symbolizes disregard for human dignity and internationally accepted morals. Number two, the existence of Gutano is counterproductive to the war effort. Number three, shutting down Gutano is practically feasible and implementable. Let's look at the policy that the Pakistan has and will implement in today. The policy that we have is we propose trying the detainees in US courts, affording them due process as well as rights to an attorney. If convicted in a civilian court, they are to serve their sentence in a normal prison that does not employ enhanced interrogation techniques. If no credible evidence is found to support a case against any detainee, he should be repatriated to his own country and a strict check should be kept on him. So ladies and gentlemen, why Bhutanamo Bay symbolizes disregard for human dignity? Let's look at what happens in Bhutan. You have autoboarding, you have sleep deprivation, you have torture, and you have electrocution. Ladies and gentlemen, these things will continue to happen in Gutanamo because the National Defense Authorization Act, passed in 31st December 2011, codifies torture and sanctions it. We believe the war on terror is not just a physical war. We believe it is a war of values. We believe it is a war set to preserve values that terrorists want to destroy. These values being freedom, modernity, and human dignity. We say that society has evolved. Yet, we're going back to medieval times in which the king could take away anyone from the street and cage him. I ask you, have we evolved for, as a society if you have Guantanamo? No. Ladies and gentlemen, once you realize that this is a war of values, you understand that you can't stoop down to the level of this terrorist. Isn't it hypocritical on behalf of the United States of America was to start this war based on values and are destroying these very values themselves? We believe it is. This is the same society, ladies and gentlemen, that propagates animal rights and yet does not regard human rights. We believe this is a hypocritical society that has been created today. And for all these reasons, we believe that since Gautama was created to bypass US and international law that prevents torture and guarantees due process, Gautama Bay should be closed down. Moreover, we believe that since there is no judicial scrutiny in Gautama and it comes under no legal obligation or legal law or convention, Gautama continuously exists in a legal loophole. How is Guantanamo Bay counterproductive? I'll be arguing this on two levels. Number one, it creates resentment within one third of the population. Number two, Al Qaeda will use this as a rallying point. Now we understand that most editors view this as a war against Islam. And Guantanamo Bay actually strengthens this viewpoint. Why? Because you have the religious books dismantled in Guantanamo. Because you have religious discrimination that is continuously taking place in this environment that disregards human dignity. Moreover, we believe that since the public image of this war on terror was a war against humanity and not a war against a particular race or a particular sect, we believe that if individuals view this, and since individuals continuously view this, it would create resentment within one third of the population, as it is a war fought for the public and you don't have public support. So let's describe how Al-Qaeda uses this as a rallying point. 
Firstly, it's seen, seen as a symbol of oppression. Secondly, they have propaganda literature. And thirdly, we've seen continuous examples of Al Qaeda posting this evidence on their websites, thus rallying more terrorists and creating more fear within society as a well. whole. Let's look at the effectiveness of our policy very quickly. We need to prove that there is a suitable, ev suitable alternative that exists in our model. We will try these detainees in US courts, and US courts has previously dealt with 149 terror-related cases with a 91% conviction rate. Now, if found guilty, we put these terrorists in the US federal prison. We have examples of how the Oklahoma City bomber, Timothy McQuaid, who, which, who perpetrated the deadliest attack on US soil, killing 168 people pre-9-11, was it was was thought through this federal, was thought through these methods that the affirmative wants to apply. Moreover, in the case of Boumediene versus Bush, the US Supreme Court declared that detainees are entitled to protection under the US Constitution. So what has Team Pakistan showed you today? We showed you that Gotano exists in, as a loop, legal loophole and this legal loophole has room for exploitation. We showed you how there are acts of torture committed in Gotano and how it is a symbol of oppression. Let's understand the importance of the symbol, ladies and gentlemen. Once France wanted to end this era of suppression, they closed down many monuments, ladies and gentlemen. They closed them down to so, show that they had taken a step and they regard human dignity. And we base ourselves on the same principle. For all these reasons, vote Pakistan. Whether it be one day or it depends on the situation that is created, but we believe it needs to be closed down immediately and this step needs to be so, taken so as quickly as possible. So basically, it's as soon as possible. Does it? Do you think it will take five years, a year? No, uh, we believe that since we have shown the effectiveness of our policy, we showed you that a US US federal US prisons will be able to take these prisoners so in their own. don't know what's to close down. No, we believe that since we can't give you an immediate span of time, whether it be one day or five days, what the affirmative needs to prove is not how many days it will be closed down, but that it needs to be closed down and this step must be taken immediately. Thank you. Um, do you think it was wrong to kill Osama bin Laden? No. It wasn't wrong to kill Osama bin Laden. So, so you can kill terrorists, but you can't incarcerate them? We believe Osama bin Laden was a self-proclaimed terrorist, but the terrorist suspects held in Guantanamo are not even self-proclaimed terrorists. Moreover, you're undermining human dignity. Okay, so you think there's at least a possibility if Guantanamo is closed down, most of these terrorists will go back to their terrorist activities. Because we showed in, so, um, in CNN News that 28% of terrorists went back to their activities after they were released. You need to realize. If you stand on a principle that you need to serve justice, even if it comes under certain costly providers, for example, you leave certain criminals that have committed murders in the past due to the fact that they are innocent, you let them out because you stand for principles of justice. A certain cost? Certain cost maybe thousands of lives of innocent civilians? Is that so okay? Aren't you? You're keeping innocent civilians in Gotham okay, okay. and you're torturing them, yet you say we are convicting and we are harming innocent people. Thank you, sir. So, in Theoretically, if there are innocent people in Guantanamo Bay, then isn't the government's responsibility to minimize the number of innocent, uh, to minimize the innocent number of people being harmed? But since Guantanamo Bay's existence is under a legal black or legal loophole, Guantanamo Bay has no judicial scrutiny, thus you can't guarantee that. You said Guantanamo. under your um, policy that you would use to hold them in civilian courts, right? Yeah. Do you uh, do you notice the fact that in the U.S. civilian courts have a jury? Yes. In juries, you normal know, people like you and I, don't we have a bias against these terrorist suspects? But these biases also exist in military courts because these people are actively fighting against these terrorists. Why did we first open Guantanamo Because you wanted to uh, bypass legal obligations. Is it because because we had um, because because the 9/11 attack that happened because terrorist attack was first we made Guantanamo Bay? But we believe this step wasn't right to take, and it has undermined human dignity. Because you're fighting a war of values, you need to protect these values in the first place. Abu Ghraib was uh, closed down years ago. Do terrorists stop attacking us? Abu Ghraib, the 
Um, Abu Grahi, the Kanye type that was um, being um, talked about because of um, But you Kanye. have terrorist attacks even in the existence of Guantanamo. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the nature of a war on terror is different from a conventional war. This isn't a war between two countries where countries' armies fighting on a battlefield in military clothes fight against each other. No, this is a war where terrorists, clothed in civilian clothing, target the public. They target civilians. And for this reason, we believe that Guantanamo Bay is a measure that we need uh, to fight against terror. Now, before I move on to our own substantive points, I'd like to first vote against the proposition's case. Now, first of all, we'd like to address their policy. Now, they. First of all, they said immediately. They never gave a time span, time span for immediately. They somehow assumed that their uh, policy would be effective, and for this reason, it would happen immediately. That would happen quickly. But we believe, ladies and gentlemen, that this could, this could be dragged on out for many years, that this could continue to happen. And we believe that in this way, we're not actually immediately closing down Guantanamo Bay. And for this reason, we believe that this policy would actually be ineffective and would not actually solve the harms that a proposition side today is actually claiming. Now, I'd like to next move on to their first point. Now, first of all, this is about the morals. They continue to actually talk about how torture is being used in Guantanamo Bay. However, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that this is untrue. Now, for example, in 2008, we saw that Red Cross volunteers and lawyers have visited Guantanamo Bay and have claimed that they have been getting good, uh, good proper treatment, that torture has been discontinued, and for this reason, we believe that terrorist suspects in Guantanamo Bay actually are not being, having their, these kind of human rights infringed. Now they said that we can, we're going back to medieval times because we can simply pick anyone off the street and simply put them in Guantanamo Bay forever. This is not the point, this is not the truth, ladies and gentlemen. They're vilifying this prison camp. But we see that in, in reality, that there are these people that are left behind. Because we have seen hundreds of people released in the past, but these people have been classified as dangerous. And next, I'd like to move on to our second point, how it's counterproductive. First of all, they said that this has become a war on ism because they're not allowed to practice religious freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe the affirmative side is living in this world maybe 2003 or 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2012 Guantanamo Bay, we see that there is religious freedom being provided to these people. We realize that they are being allowed to pray within their prison cells. And that even if um, many, um, a lot, only a large, only, even if only a majority of these people are Islam, we're not actually declaring a war on Islam, Islam and we're not just in this way, it's not being counterproductive. Secondly, we talk about how Al Qaeda uses Guantanamo Bay as proof against America. Ladies and gentlemen, whether or not we close down Guantanamo Bay, Al Qaeda is suddenly going to say, "Oh, Guantanamo Bay is closed. Now we love America." This is not the truth, ladies and gentlemen. What we see is that continuously, for example, as we explained in our cross examination, Abu Ghraib uh, prison in, um, uh, in in Iraq was actually closed down. However, people continue to use it as a symbol of corruption. And for this reason, we see that um, closing it down in any way will not actually change or actually solve this problem. And thirdly, they talk about how this is feasible. Now they say that people will be put on trial, but people, they also said that people who are not be able to put on trial because of evidence against them. They said send, they'll send them back to their own country. However, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is that many of these prisoners have actually said that they don't want to be sent back to their own country because that they're being treated better in Guantanamo Bay and they actually fear that um, their own country is actually killing them. And for this reason, we believe that, um, that for this reason, we see that but the proposition case is actually um, false and that we'd like to next move on to our own substantive points. Now, we have two points today. First of all, that um, it's, the existence of Guantanamo Bay is justified ethically, and secondly, that national security is of great importance. Now, first of all, how, how Guantanamo Bay is actually justified. We see that ethically, we, we do admit that de detainees do lose some rights, that their rights are suspended, especially their right to due process. How do we see that this is ethically justified? Now, first of all, we see that much, first of all, we see that those who we can actually put on trial are being put on trials. We see that Obama recently has continued to have military trials against uh, for these people, and that that this is actually being provided to them. Secondly, we see that we are releasing innocent people. When it's seen that these people are innocent, we see hundreds of people being sent to countries that will accept them. And for this reason, we see that if they're innocent, that they're actually being sent back. Now, thirdly, we see that the people who are left behind, the people who are not even, the number that doesn't even reach 200, that we see that in many cases, 
there's either not enough evidence against them or that this is sensitive evidence that we can't use in court. And we see that although these people are a danger, we believe that they, for this reason, they still need to be in Guantanamo Bay. And thirdly, we see that human rights have been reformed, ladies and gentlemen. We believe that these people are not being tortured. These people are being allowed religious freedom. And that lawyers and Red Cross volunteers have actually explicitly said this. And next, we'd like to talk about national security. Now, the form of security against terrorists that we need, ladies and gentlemen, we see that we have released these people. However, 28% of these people, according to CNN, have actually gone back to terrorist activities. We see that this fact itself shows that many of the terrorists who are released, when, when, given off the, when evidence is not given against them, actually do return to terrorist activities. We see that um, one of the people released actually later became the, one of the chiefs of Al-Qaeda. And secondly, we see that um, we, the reason, one, another reason that we cannot actually close down Guantanamo Bay is because we need a prison for these people. In the end, we, a prison for, uh, for terrorists is needed. And we do not believe that we should be putting them on American soil. We have seen American people actually cry out against the fact that terrorists are on their soil. And we believe that even Obama, whose original promise to actually close down Guantanamo Bay, was he actually later um, declined to say that he was unable to because he needs to keep the American people safe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, because of these reasons, because that we need a prison somewhere, and that Guantanamo Bay is actually the ideal prison for us, and because human rights are actually being upheld in Guantanamo Bay, we believe that um, Guantanamo Bay prison should not be closed down immediately. Thank you. They are different from average criminals. How so? Because we believe that they actually cause much more damage on a much larger scale. All terrorists? Yes, we believe that most of them. Every single terrorist has killed 3,000 people. We do not believe that we can affirm this fact, but because so we can't check every single terrorist. So you don't believe that terrorists are different because they have certain ideologies? Well, even if this might be the case, we believe that um, terrorists. Okay, so, so what about white supremacists who commit hate attacks? Don't they have wrong ideology? Why are they in one time? We, we never said that terrorists are different from criminals because of their ideology. Okay, so then they're not different from criminals. No, they are different. They're All right, so what about the terrorists who have been convicted mass attacks, conducted mass attacks? We believe that the, in many cases that these people are conspiring to. Do you have proof? Yes, we believe that there is proof of the new American. Um, so the American government defines the proof. And yes, we believe that most of this proof is actually... The American government which operates in a place where there is no judicial scrutiny. However, we believe that this evidence... There are no checks and, checks and balances. No, we believe that these people are getting trials. Um, we see that many of these terrorists actually are getting military trials currently, and that evidence is being used against them, and that this evidence is actually valid. A, a military trial in which there is no accountability. No, we do not believe that military trials have no accountability. We believe that if there is no accountability, there would be no point in an oh, actual okay. military So force. was Khalid Sheikh Mohammed waterboarded 183 times? Um, I don't know the number, but then we believe that happened in 2005 and as we explained, so that in today's Guantanamo Bay, the torture is not being okay, used. So did Obama pass the National Defense Authorization Act in, on December 31st, 2011? How about we, as we said before, that did he, did he or not? Uh, as we said, that according to you, he has. He has, right? And that sanctions torture. So it does still take place. How do we believe that as a It does still take place. We've seen people actually third um objective okay, so third party people go into Guantanamo Bay prison and actually say yes that these that torture is not being used. But he still are being but but he he still, he still passed an executive order which allows torture to take place, yes or no? According to you, yes. According to an act that was passed by him. <laughs> So you can see that the majority of them, the majority of people in Guantanamo are Muslims. No, we believe that they're from many different countries. We've actually seen in the past that they're they may be from many different countries, but that doesn't mean they're not Muslims. There are people, there are many prisoners in Guantanamo Bay who are not Muslims. You think that there are many prisoners in Guantanamo? We believe that there are prisoners who are not Muslims. Oh, okay. So um, what is the purpose of a prison? We believe a, pers a purpose of a prison is to detain people. So why can't they be detained in normal prisons? We believe that, as you said, American people have outcried against terrorists being on their soil. Okay, but are the people always right? No, but we believe that if this, if this actually compromises national security of the people, then that's why we should keep them mm -hmm. off of American soil. Thank you. Thank you. It was based upon the fact 
that civilian tiles will be able to do the same job as will be able to do a better job than these military tribunals. Till now, the negative has not tackled that civilian tiles are ineffective. So, or, or they have not come up in here and proved to us why military tribunals are better than civilian tiles. And because we have failed to do this, we fail to understand why we have a problem with us using civilian tiles which are more transparent, which provide a better method of accountability to, in order to ensure that, these, that a fair decision is taken. Let's talk about the things that they have tackled. Firstly, we'd like to point out to you from the get-go that they've primarily focused on torture. We aren't only against Guantanamo Bay because there is torture, ladies and gentlemen. We gave you four reasons. One, torture, two, legal backbone, three, international law, and four, the rallying point. They are primarily focused upon torture and have not tackled this point of it being a legal backbone and this point of international law. But what they, did they argue in response to our uh, torture argument? They came up here and they said, ladies and gentlemen, that torture is not still used in Guantanamo Bay. But in the cross-examination, they conceded to the fact that a law has been passed, and which was pointed out by my third speaker, that a law has been passed which allows torture to take place. So the entire argument of how torture is not taking place in Guantanamo Bay falls flat on the face. Another argument they said was that people have been released. And this was something that they responded to how if, even if they are torturing people, people have been released. He firmly believes, ladies and gentlemen, that by that time, the ship has sailed. If you're releasing people after torturing them, then what is the point, ladies and gentlemen? You have already tortured them. You have already inflicted people uh, that pain on these people. There was another point, and that was the rallying point argument. There was a concession in their speech, ladies and gentlemen, in their speech. They said that even after Abu Ghraib was closed down, people used those images in order to rally people, uh, rally support for this war, uh, for this war terror. So they're conceding to the fact that these detention centers, such as Guantanamo Bay, can be used to rally support for people, can be used to rally more people to the terrorist cause. So that's the first concession. And the second thing, ladies and gentlemen, uh, our rally point argument was based upon the fact that majority of people in inmates in Guantanamo Bay are Muslims. Did they ever give you clear evidence that the majority of the inmates in Guantanamo Bay are not Muslims? In fact, when we cross-examined the ladies and gentlemen, all they had to say was that, well, they're not Muslims, there are other people there as well, people of different nationalities. Just because a person is from a different country doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that he belongs to a different religion. What was their attack on our policy? The time span, ladies and gentlemen. We feel that the burden on Team Affirmative is from the full ghetto to prove to you that Guantanamo Bay should be closed down and should be closed down in the immediate future, ladies and gentlemen. And if our policy is effective, then there is no reason for you to drag this out on for years. And because they have never sufficiently tackled our policy, the only argument they did present was this time span argument, we feel that this won't go on for uh, this longer period of time that they are, sitting, they, that they are proposing that will. And they never, uh, and the only other deputation that they had to our case was that the American people are against uh, having these terrorists on United States soil. Well, the American people are also against torturing these people in the first place. So by that logic, stop torturing. The American people are also against Guantanamo Bay, ladies and gentlemen. By that logic, close down Guantanamo Bay. So these are all the arguments that were presented by Team Negative, team negative in response to our arguments. What was their case? They feel, ladies and gentlemen, that Guantanamo Bay is justified, is ethically justified. They believe that some rights are suspended and military trials are present. We believe, and this was our argument, that military trials represent the same amount of transparency as these civilian trials, and they have never tackled that. On the second level, they're talking about innocent people being sent back. This is a concession to our policy which says that people can be sent back once uh, 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 that people can be repatriated. So, they are, uh, so the argument that they presented about how people cannot be repatriated, they themselves are conceding with the fact that people can be repatriated. And the second thing, ladies and gentlemen, that national security is important. 
in order for you to win uh, this debate, you have to prove how, if we, uh, how by letting, by closing down Guantanamo Bay and having civilian trials, which will decide whether these people are innocent or guilty, and if they are guilty, then put them in maximum security prisons. How is putting them in maximum security prisons against national security if they are guilty? And if they can, uh, and another argument was about how terrorists can commit crimes again. We feel that we aren't suspending this effort on the war on terror. We're just letting the civilian courts decide whether these terrorists are innocent or guilty. And in our policy, you can also have checks and balances on these people as well. So for all these reasons, work for them. Then by that logic, don't try serial killers in civilian courts as well, because when you, when the media reports on the acts of these serial uh, killers, automatically the jury has against civilian courts. Has the war on terror been covered for more, over a decade about how exactly dangerous these terrorist suspects are? But in order to win this argument, you have to prove to us how the criminal justice system of the United States of America is ineffective. But aren't military trials also um, covered by the press? They aren't. The entire point of a military trial is to have this trial in secrecy where you could tie this person without letting all the information out, without letting, without giving them proper rights such as the right to due process without... But aren't the military trials you need today? Isn't the press covering it today? The pre but you don't know what is going on in these trials. In civilian trials, you have greater accountability because you allow people... Okay, thank you. Now, how are you, how are you, uh, the government side, do you, does, okay, so do you agree that Guantanamo Bay actually fights against terrorism? Guantanamo Bay causes resentment amongst people, leads to a... But do you believe that it in some ways actually does counter terrorism? The only way that, even if we agree to your argument, the only way that it can counter terrorism is by holding people in detention or by holding people in captivity, which is the same thing that normal US prisons, maximum security prisons can do. Then how exactly is the firm side saying that we should fight against terrorism? We should fight against terrorism by holding the values uh, which we held there from the very get-go by ha having the same values, by not stooping down to the level of these terrorists, by having maximum security prisons in order to detain these uh, uh, convicted terrorists once you have these civilian courts. Okay, so you, in your policy, are you sending people back to their own countries? Yes, we are repatriating them, but you yourself have conceded no. in your arguments that you can repatriate these people. No, we said that we're sending them back to countries who actually accept them. Don't you believe that there are terrorist suspects who have said that they don't want to go back to their home countries with the fear of being killed? Terrorist suspects also say, don't torture us. Do you stop torturing them? You won't. In the immediate future, if you, if the only contention you have is that it can't be closed down, we are saying that if our policy is affected and because you haven't tapped us, then there's no reason for you to uh, uh, have your plan move open for a longer period of time. Okay, no further Ladies and gentlemen, we see that if debates can be won by contradictions and pure assumptions, we see that yes, in today's debate, side proposition could have won today's debate. But what we see is that in today's debate, because side proposition has been relying too much on assumptions, on the assumption that basically all people in Guantanamo Bay prison are indeed innocent, and second of all, because they're assuming that they have somewhat of a way to fight war on terror without Guantanamo Bay, we find that we, on side opposition, win today's debate. Now, as the second speaker, I'm going to be doing for you mainly two things. First of all, I'm going to refute the points that were made by side, op side proposition, first of all, and then I'm going to take a look at what they said against our points. But first of all, I want to say there are three things that side proposition has to prove in order to win today's debate. First of all, they have to prove to us that closing down Autonomo Bay has a net benefit. Second of all, they have to prove that basically having this policy of immediate is basically effective as well as practical. And third of all, they have to prove was there a way to fight terrorism other than basically having one ton of bait. And they have failed to do all three, and that is why we on the side opposition bank to oppose today's motion. Now let's first take a look at some other contradictions that proposition, that proposition has made in today's debate. Now in our first, first cross-examination, we asked them, oh, do you think killing Osama bin Laden was 
wrong? And they said, no, it was great. And so we said, so is it okay to go up in someone's face who's eating lunch and shoot him in the face? And they said, yeah, because he's a terrorist suspect. And so they, on site proposition in today's debate, they say that they're old. We're basically saying that we have to hold these dear values that America holds. But they say it's okay to just randomly go to a terrorist suspect in their own words and basically kill them. We find that killing them, basically depriving them of their own right of due process and basically of the, the basic right of life, is worse than basically keeping them detained. But we also keep them in a nice facility in Guantanamo Bay where they have access to the economies, nice television, free air conditioning. And so we do not see what the real problem is on side proposition in today's debate. Now let's move on to the arguments that side proposition has made. First of all, how Guantanamo Bay symbolizes bad values. Second of all, how it, it, the existence of Guantanamo Bay, is, Guantanamo Bay is counterproductive. And finally, the argument of basically feasibility. Now the first argument of how Guantanamo Bay symbolizes bad values. Now first of all, we have a couple of levels of reputation against this. First of all, we believe closing down Guantanamo Bay solves nothing. Basically, as we have shown in our first speech, closing down Guantanamo Bay is going to make terrorists all cookies and love and magical rainbows, and they're not going to say, oh, I love you, America, because you closed down Guantanamo Bay. No, that proposition needs to show us a clear link between closing down Guantanamo Bay and losing this bad value. But on the second level of contention, we believe that closing down simply Guantanamo Bay does not solve anything. As we've given you this example of Abu Ghraib, which they have failed to mention or actually logically understand, as we've shown you, Abu Ghraib was just closed down, but in the status quo it is still used as America's bad history and morals. What we see is that in the status quo, as Guantanamo Bay has changed in the past, and is changing, and will continue changing, we see that that is a true importance of basically changing the fact that Guantanamo Bay symbolizes bad values. And second of all, on this point, they talk about how it's basically a legal black hole. However, we believe that that's not really a problem. We've shown you that the, in the status quo, media members, basically these Red Cross members, going to Guantanamo Bay, they, they, um, they basically investigate these facilities and make sure that these human rights violations are not going on. And just because something that sanctions torture was passed in the recent years doesn't mean that it goes on. We see that because the media constantly scrutinizes Guantanamo Bay, it acts as somewhat of a check and balance that the judicial system can no longer do in the status quo. Now let's move on to the second argument they talked about of how this basic existence is counterproductive. As I've already shown you, closing this down does not solve anything. It's not as if terrorists are going to stop their activities just because we closed down Guantanamo Bay. They have failed to show the clear link that closing down Guantanamo Bay actually leads to benefits that we can see in the status quo. They have not shown you that closing down Guantanamo Bay would reduce terrorist activities, and that's why this point also stands in the status quo. Now let's move on to their argument of finding this practical feasibility of how basically having this civilian force is really great. Now we believe that this is completely incorrect. They have failed to address the fact that juries are biased. We find that juries are very much people like you and I. When we hear, for the past 10 years, since 2001, basically when Bush said, oh, the war on terror is really important and these terrorists are attacking our liberties, we find that this has been constantly going on. And so people have an inherent bias against these terrorists. And so we think that civilian courts can no longer work in the status quo. But furthermore, they have assumed that military courts basically are all equally biased, but we find that that's not the case. They have assumed that military courts use all of these bad um, ideals, but the only truth is military courts keep evidence that is confidential, secret, because this evidence can be used, again, this evidence can be used by terrorists to attack American um, national security. And basically, we find that to be unacceptable. Now, in today's debate, side proposition needs to prove to us, first of all, that innocent people are Basically, that innocent people are still in Guantanamo Bay, and that's not a theoretical possibility. But furthermore, they didn't prove that by closing down Guantanamo Bay, there is no threat to national security. And because side opposition believes in national security, we beg to oppose today's motion. Thank you. was a terrorist suspect. A suspect that hasn't been tried. You realize he was convicted in absentia and thus was not a terrorist suspect? But a suspect, you said, was a suspect. A person convicted is not a suspect. But you, you realize said, that you said that we are allowed to kill terrorist suspects. So what but you Osama mean? bin Laden was someone convicted and not a suspect. But Moving you on. said Moving that, on. excuse me, can I ask the question? We think that no. we are sh terrorists okay. have state of the art facilities at the Tarmo Bay. So I'm not allowed to answer the other question, but I'm allowed to answer this one. I'm really confused right now. Terrorists have state-of-the-art facilities at Guantanamo Bay. Excuse me? 
Terrorists have state-of-the-art facilities at Guantanamo Bay. Well, if they have to be air conditioning, it could be TV. Is one of these state-of-the-art facilities torture? Um, we believe that if you can provide some example, since 2005, where a person has been tortured, and yes, they torture. You realize Guantanamo can't come under legal scrutiny because it exists under the But the media and you and the Red Cross are still being scrutinized. I'm screaming and beating a kid in my car. A teacher comes, can I stop? Excuse me? I'm screaming and beating a child in my class. I see a teacher approaching. Can I stop? We believe that's not the case. That's nothing like the case in Guantanamo. I can stop. Just like physics in Kutarmo. Once they torture someone, they can stop seeing that a teacher is approaching. It's not like a video is going to say, Hey, I'm going to come, so why don't you stop the torture going on? No, no. But, you, but you need approval to come into Kutarmo, so yes, the teacher will ask. But basically, we think that this situation, in its extremity, and it also is basic, Fundamental basis of Hold on to the thought of extremity. You don't give terrorists rights because they are dangerous? They are extremely dangerous. A serial killer who kills 300 is extremely dangerous. More dangerous than a person who bombs 50, right? But we see that terrorists are in the war. Is he more dangerous, yes or no? Well, I'm sure you'd like to ask the 9 11 uh, based victim to see who's Never more. Mind. You're in a prison with no bomb. Can you bomb? What? You're in, a you're in a prison with no bomb. Can you bomb? You can. How? Oh. Does, does your heat produce... Does your body produce bombs? Or mine, or mine does How can terrorists be a threat to national security in a prison? The fact is, under your policy, when they are released, they become is national so security. Is someone innocent and proven guilty? In the case of where there is war, we believe that does not no longer in effect. Someone is innocent and proven guilty. These terror suspects are not tried in a court. They are still innocent. They are tried in a civilian court. Thus, our principle of them being innocent stand. Right? That wasn't really the question. We said people are innocent and proven guilty, right? Yes. These terrorist suspects are not right, so they stay innocent. Thank you for your speech. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So today, Team Negative wants to live in a world where animal rights are given precedence over human rights. They want to live in a world where no law applies. They want to live in a world where hypocrisy is more acceptable than justice. And this is something that Team Pakistan cannot accept. Now before we move on to the main issues, we would like to make a few clarifications. Number one, this debate is not only about torture. There are other reasons that we brought out against Guantanamo that were not dealt with, which I will talk about in my issues. Number one, their whole argument about threat to national security was based on the assumption that we are releasing terrorists. We are not releasing them, we are trying them in civilian courts, ladies and gentlemen. Now, moving on to the major issues. The first issue is the fact that Guantanamo Bay is changing enough to keep it open. We believe it is, it is not. Number two, does a world where animal rights are given precedence to human rights present a catalyst for terrorist activity? We strongly believe it does. And number three, is our policy effective? And we believe it is. Now, first issue first. Is the fact that Guantanamo Bay is changing, is changing enough to keep it open? Now, we have two reputations. Number one, we said it is not actually changing. We said, first of all, what they conceded to was that the National Defense Authorization Act was passed by President Obama in, on December 31st, 2011, something that they conceded to. So torture can still take place. Then they said that reforms have been made. Well, the fact is, ladies and gentlemen, that Guantanamo Bay exists in a legal black hole. There are, it does not abide by any international conventions. So even if these supposed reforms have been made, there is no insurance that they will actually be implemented and followed as they would have you believe. Ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you a question. Would you love to be tortured in a room where the thermostat is perfectly adjusted if there is an air conditioner or if you have some magazines? We believe simply because there are a few magazines which they, they don't give any proof for in the first place, that does not justify the fact that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was
was waterboarded, made to feel like he was drowning 183 times. There is no justification for that, ladies and gentlemen. Number two, on the second level, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that the fact that this happened even in the past, we don't believe, believe that it still doesn't happen, but even if we do say that a certain form can be made, the fact that it happened even in the past is enough to close down a facility. Now, another issue they did not deal with was our entire point about how the United States will be representing a hypocritical a hypo, a state which is based on hypocrisy if they do not act in the way that King Pakistan is, uh, is proposing it. This war is not just a physical war. It is just as much a war about moral values. The United Nations, the champion of human rights, has to regain the moral high ground. President Obama said in 2009 that Guantanamo Bay should be closed down in order to regain the moral high ground. Because what we're doing and what they're doing in essence is upholding the very same values that they hope to eradicate. And that is something that the Pakistan cannot stand for. Number one, which is this entire issue about um, the terrorists uh, having a rallying point. And they conceded that the incident of Abu Ghraib did result in um, present, uh, proposing a rallying point for terrorists. And then they did use this to rally further support. They posted it on their website. And as a result, they helped to gather support for their cause. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, they said that there would be a greater threat to national security in our world. But we think that there would be greater threat to national security in their world, number one, because of this issue. Number three, moving on to my next issue, which is, is our policy effective? Now, the only, one of the major contentions that they had was that there was, in a, if you tried them in the civilian court, they had no problem except that there would be jury bias. Well, number one, with the jury, both the defense and the prosecution gets to examine that jury, and therefore this does lead to that problem. Number two, jury bias exists in a number of situations. Ethnic profiling causes jury bias, and we suppose that they would like to uphold ethnic profi profiling as well, since they want to uphold an institution which tortures suspects and gentlemen. Because of that, they can't simply come out here and say that jury bias is only going to exist in our world. Jury and, and bias also exists in military tribunals. They said, we asked them, what is the purpose of a prison? They only came out here and said, incapacitation. Why can't that happen in federal prisons? They said, because people aren't going to allow it. We said, well, a, lot of, a, a large majority of Americans don't support torture. A large majority of Americans don't support Guantanamo Bay. One third of the Muslim world does not, uh, one third of the world, they said, does not support these methods. Because we approve to you all these things, we strongly affirm this motion. But before we leave, we'd like to say something on behalf of Deepak Sam. Viva Mento! Check and 
Catholicism of torture not being used. They've basically gave, given us an example of, of Kali Sheikh Mohammed being, being tortured in 2005. Well, we said, first of all, give us an example after 2005 where these people have actually been tortured. And second of all, we say that Kali Sheikh Mohammed, the torturing of his, uh, Kali Sheikh Mohammed wasn't actually justified because it wasn't an exceptional circumstance and because of all these other uh, criteria. We, uh, we stated the opposition, we will only keep Guantanamo Bay open for the act of detaining these terrorists, not for information, not for gaining information. So that's, that's it, we say, the proposition is flawed on this point. Second of all, they, they talked about how these people are not being given fair trials, how these people aren't being given fair trials, therefore we'll put them in civilian courts. We have two problems with this, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, we said that because of the transparency, because we, need, or because we believe that the jury system was biased, because we have people like you and I who know how terrorist attacks might cause harms, very various harms in today's society, that it's not going to work as transparent as they want to. Second of all, we proved to you, unlike military courts, there are certain pieces of evidence that cannot be used, that cannot be disclosed to the public because of the fact that this evidence is, gained, um, is confidential and has to be gained in certain other means. So therefore, we say that it can't be used in civilian courts. And they have failed to engage on the point of asking whether or not civilian courts will bring actually more justice or not. So we say they are being given fair trials in this situation, as, as the same as the proposition side proposed. The difference is, they need to show we need to do this immediately. Because, well, someday it has to be closed. Someday Guantanamo Bay has to close, ladies and gentlemen. But ne they've never shown us what immediately is and when they're going to do it. They'll just say, it's going to happen. But when? Is it five years? Is it ten years? Obama failed to do this when he promised this in his, uh, before his election. We say, how is the, uh, how is the proposition going to do this as well? Now, after that, um, all that said, let's move on to our second clash. Explain the social implications that will happen at the domestic level when Guantanamo Bay is closed down. First of all, we told you there is, a no, there is no way of fighting against these terrorists. They said to respond, how are you going to fight against these terrorists if Guantanamo Bay is not open? They said, by holding the values we hold just. So if I go to war as, as a soldier and go against terrorists, and I say, I love you, man. We say, I believe that you are a loving citizen that, that has rights. We say, how are you going to tackle them by holding your values? We say we live in a realistic world where we don't, we, we have to something the um, go against certain rights. We say that rights aren't absolute, therefore we say that we can't actually hold all the values of terrorists. We mentioned that cross, in our cross-examination, was it justifiable to kill Osama bin Laden? They said yes. So it's okay to kill a terrorist, but not okay to torture them, not keep, not keep incarcerating them. We say that in this case, the opposition, uh, proposition stand was flimsy, flimsy in this as well. So therefore, we'd like to move on to our second um, well, point, sub point, which is about the international scale. They said that terrorists will ca ca cause even more attacks and cause even more resentment. First of all, we told you about Abu Ibrahim, how it's closed down, but still was caused a cause of resentment, a source of resentment. Therefore, we need to reform Guantanamo Bay before it's actually closed down. Second of all, we've shown you how we did not create Guantanamo Bay because, because of the app and we, the terrorist attacks did not occur because we created Guantanamo Bay. Well, Guantanamo Bay was created because terrorist attacks were, were causing in 9-11. So therefore we say because of the negative social implications that happen in Guantanamo Bay if Guantanamo Bay is closed. And second of all, because of the moral justification we've shown you, we strongly propose a uh, this motion. Let's give the teams another round of applause.